site assessment. Drainage. Some sites are drained pretty well, and some, most if I had to, to, to guess, uh, are not drained adequately enough to really uh, promote luxurious growth and, uh, and yield, okay, high yield. So uh, there's tests that you can do to determine if your soil is drained. Uh, this is one for fruit trees we, we typically use. You drill a hole, guys, uh, whether it be with an auger or with, a, with some hand tool, and uh, post hole digger and you fill that up, let it drain and then you fill it up again. If it drains less than 10 hours, it's really well drained and your roots are going to proliferate through that soil. You're going to have good growth and your, your plants aren't going to be stressed. Uh, 10 to 24 hours, it's, you're going to have a little bit of uh, diminished yield and performance. If it's still, there's still water in that hole after 24 hours, you need to reconsider. Now, I'm not telling you to sell your property, right? I'm just saying you need to look at a different way of growing things. And, and we're going to look at that, whether it be a container, a raised bed, or a mound. You know, we can do that. Just don't beat yourself up and say it's, I just, you want. in other words, if this is your situation now, please stay around, don't leave. There is hope, okay? And then your surface drainage, if it stands in water for very long, whether it be a container or a bed, it's going to suck up water and the, the plants are just not going to do very well. Plus, <laughs> Uh, who wants to wear rubber boots around all the time in your backyard? This is a well-drained site. Well-drained. The problem is it's difficult to plant in. Okay, so whether it be a poorly, internal, poorly internally drained site or something like this that you'd see in the Arbuckles, you'd say, you know, I'd say, forget that. Let's just go ahead and, and, and bring some soil in and we'll grow on top of that. Because it is well-drained. It's just not the best site for... Uh, for transplanting into, or can you imagine a push planter in that situation? You'd tear it up, first pass, right? Okay, in the city, we like shade. We like trees. Cuts down our utility bills and increases the quality of life when we sit on the porch. Problem is, plants don't like to grow in shade, especially vegetables. Anything that produces fruit is not going to yield well. So you have, a, you have an issue here. Uh, if that's my backyard, I'm going to have to think real seriously about whether I want to invest my time into growing something. What you could do in that type of situation is you could wait till winter time. You could grow in a hoop house and you could grow greens, root crops, and, and enjoy that tremendously. In the summertime, you, I would probably grow earthworms there or something in that shade. Uh, maybe, maybe some, again, some greens as long as I could. But in terms of warm season crops, you know, the cucurbit family, Tomatoes and stuff, ew, you're going to have stringy plants. They're not going to do too well. So do you cut the trees down or not? What if they're, what if you're, they're, they're, they're your neighbor's trees? You going to cut them down too? Okay, well, you, you, could, you, could, you could poison them and act like you didn't know what was going on. But that's, um, that's probably not the ethical thing to do. Slope. Something like this, you're not going to want to plow up. It's just going to erode. So that's, that's a, an ideal situation, rather, for beds, to, to construct beds. And then what about your ground cover? The Bermuda grass is excellent. You want something kids can run around on, play football. But you can't grow th too much in that stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's just too competitive. So you're going to have to make a choice. Do you want grass or you want, you know, you want something to eat or you want something to, uh, to, to play on? I can't answer these questions for you. Um, some people compromise, have divided up, have one part in, in you know, in, in a food crop, in a food factory, if you will, and the other part. But what if your, your yard's too small for that? Again, questions you, only you can answer. Some people object to using herbicides, such as Roundup, which glyphosate, which is the trade name Roundup, or some generic forms to control the grass, but that still is the primary, the best way to control Bermuda grass. If you want to grow organically, you can just grit your teeth, spray, get rid of the grass, and then not use it again. And you could use some other spot sprays with different materials or just do a lot of hand weeding. Okay, another thing that a lot of us forget about is that there are a lot of things underground on our property. And we certainly need to call Oki and find out where they are before we start building, whether it be you know, an outbuilding or whether we dig holes for post, you know, for, uh, for a trellis or something. Don't injure yourself.